Morning Consult released the poll, and the results here are incredibly cathartic because it basically confirms what we all have felt, that most Americans hate our government, we hate politicians in both parties, and we also hate both parties because the net favorability that we're seeing here based on this poll, I mean, I don't know why we're not seeing mass resignations given how widespread the dissatisfaction is among the American people. So let's take a look here. So when it comes to Vice President Harris, she sits at a net negative 9% favorability rating. Biden is at net negative 10%. Mike Pence, net negative 13%. Kevin McCarthy, net negative 14%. Donald Trump, net negative 15%. Chuck Schumer, also net negative 15%. And then we go to Nancy Pelosi and we see a jump. She sits at net negative 26%, less popular than Donald Trump and the president of the United States. Wow. And then we have Mitch McConnell, and I'm assuming that even his own parents hate him because he's sitting at a net negative 34%. Now, when it comes to congressional GOP, net negative 13%, and congressional Democrat, net negative 14%. Wow. Now, I think that good politic guy had the best response to this. He tweeted out, just toss the whole government into the sun. Exactly, because what's the point? What are they even there for? They can't even do basic governance. The bare minimum, they they can't pull it off. They are fundamentally broken. I mean, there's been unaddressed crises for decades, and there's still no urgency to address the needs of the American people. You know, compared with other developed countries, we were left hanging during a global pandemic. That is still very much going on. I mean, unemployment benefits were cut off early. The moratorium on evictions went away far too soon. So we just are continuously left out. What we want doesn't get codified into law. What elites want gets codified into law. It seems like Congress is just there as corporate HQ and politicians don't necessarily serve their constituents so much as they serve their own interests. They're there seemingly to get inside insight into, you know, what they should do with regard to the stock market. They're there to set themselves up for a future job as a lobbyist. They're just not there for us, and people see it. That's reflected in these results. That's why they're all so unpopular. And this isn't a new phenomenon. There's a poll, or not a poll, uh, excuse me, a study uh, that was published in 2014 by Princeton University's doctors uh, Gillens and Page, and I talk about this all the time, but it's really important. So they found out that when it comes to policy outcomes, we have a statistically insignificant impact on what gets codified into law, whereas business interests and special interests, what they want more often than not becomes law. Why? Because we live in an oligarchy. So the American people, if anything, were an obstacle to what the politicians really want to do, which is just deliver to their corporate donors and, you know, have a job in Congress where they get paid six figures. It, it's This is why we hate them. We all hate them. Now, there's another poll that I want to look at. Uh, this is really interesting. This is out of California. So Politico's Jeremy White explains, Senator Dianne Feinstein's approval ratings have plummeted to unprecedented lows as California voters turn against their senior senator, according to a new poll from the Berkeley Institute of Governmental Studies. Voters disapproved of Feinstein's job performance by an enormous 19-point margin. Her standing has steadily eroded with her approval rating, now at just 30%, dropping five points since May. She does not command majority approval among Democrats, topping out at 45%, and she has lost the left with Democrats who consider themselves strongly liberal, more likely to disapprove by five points. Vice President Kamala Harris also fared poorly in her home state. More voters disapproved of her job performance, 46%, than approved, 38%, a sign of political peril for Harris, whose ascension was a point of pride in California. Yeah, yeah. But yet, you know, when you go back to the uh, election results back in uh, 2018, Dianne Feinstein, she beat all of the progressive options that were on the ballot. And then there was a milquetoast corporate Democrat, but a lesser corporatist than Dianne Feinstein, Kevin DeLeon, and he lost by like 10 points. So, you know, it's perplexing to me to see voters consistently vote these politicians into office again and again and again, but yet they're still dissatisfied. See, if you don't opt for someone new, such as a progressive or leftist, then this is what is going to happen time and again. You will be dissatisfied. But the problem is that we have a media apparatus that tells people that the Democratic Party is far left. So when they see progressives 
who actually run on real policies, they think, oh, well, you know, I can't support that because they're either A, unelectable, or B, they'll be unpopular like Joe Biden, another far leftist. So, you know, people are so dissatisfied with the government, but yet they elect these politicians. I mean, they had a chance in Kentucky, for example, to oust Mitch McConnell, and they voted for him again. So, I mean, on one hand, it, it's nice to see that people feel the way that I feel when it comes to, uh, you know, these politicians and our government. But at the same time, it's deeply frustrating that they continue to elect the same people. 99 times out of 100, we always see the incumbent win. I mean, once in a while, we'll have a, a primary upset. Cory Bush will oust Lacey Clay. But more often than not, the incumbent wins. So if you're all dissatisfied, but you keep electing incumbents, maybe voters should be a little bit introspective and acknowledge that the media has been duping them. Maybe the media doesn't have their best interests in mind. Maybe the media's advertisers are the same companies that are donating to these politicians that they all hate. But the problem is that when people acknowledge that the media is bad, then they go seek out alternative media that is perhaps even more dangerous, like dipshits, like, you know, Alex Jones or Joe Rogan that tells them vaccines are bad. So we're in this perpetual cycle of... um shittiness I, I don't know how else to call it uh, dystopia and people they acknowledge the problem that exists but yet they don't they don't know what to do to fix it so here we are now um you know uh, since we're, we're on the subject of polls we should definitely look at joe biden's approval ratings so 53 percent of americans disapprove while 41.4 percent of americans approve this is not good to say the least if I'm Joe Biden and we're going into, you know, a midterm election not too far from now, I would be, I don't know, trying to do something, trying, maybe just trying anything, but he's all out of ideas and he's tried nothing. But luckily for Joe Biden, I have a great idea because there's something that he can do unilaterally without abolishing the filibuster, without courting the support of Manchin and Cinema. And it would be extremely popular. How popular? Well, let's take a look here. As Andrea Germanos of Common Dreams explains, among Democrats, according to the survey from Navigator Research, 83% expressed support for the federal government wiping out at least a portion of student debt. Looking at respondents overall, 63% back debt cancellation, including 59% of independents and 41% of Republicans. The strongest support came from Black Americans at 87%, followed by Hispanic 72%, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders 68%, and White 57% of respondents. Strong support for debt cancellation came whether or not respondents hold debt themselves. 89% of those currently saddled with student loan debt support cancellation compared to 75% of among those who've ever had such debt at any time. Even among those who've never had student debt at all, support for cancellation stood at 55%. So if you're a president and your approval rating is steadily decreasing, you're losing support with black voters who have been historically loyal to your party and you need them to win. If young voters who turned out for you in 2020 were uh, all of a sudden being turned off because you're not doing anything to deliver, this is an easy W, and Biden is choosing to leave that on the table. You would increase your support among every demographic. Republicans are even ecstatic about this, 41%. And he's saying, no. This is why we hate you. This is why we hate our government. Because they talk a big game, right, on the campaign trail. They make a lot of promises, but then as soon as they get in, the lobbyists get in their ear and then they backtrack. So we don't believe you and we hate you. And this is exactly why. But I mean, if Biden doesn't want to cancel student debt, even if he should feel guilty and should want to cancel it, given that he helped facilitate the student debt crisis that we're dealing with since his bankruptcy bill made it so that way it is almost impossible to discharge your student debt. Um, you know, what he could do is at least fight for Build back better. But do you want to know how he's fighting for it as you pledged to do? Here's what he tweeted out. My Build Back Better agenda includes the largest investment to combat climate change in U.S. history. It'll help meet the moment on climate, create good paying jobs, and lower energy costs for Americans. Let's get it done. I mean, is this a subtweet to Mansion and Cinema? Believe it or not, this is almost uh, certainly his outreach to young people. Hey, look at I said climate change in a tweet. That means I care. Vote for me. This is why we fucking despise 
all of you in government. I mean, the situation is terrible. We have uh, so much crises. Like, our system is essentially on the verge of collapse. Democracy is in decline. Uh, and we have one party in Congress that is so extreme that they're just basically shitting their pants and spitting on people. And then we have another party that's so corrupt and weak that they won't even do the bare minimum. They won't even do the incrementalism that they used to do. Now, incrementalism is too much to ask. I mean, remember, Build Back Better, even though progressives are pushing for it, it's because this was basically all that Biden promised on the campaign trail that was at least going to take us in the right direction. But this was all milk toast. This was all not what we wanted, right? We wanted to go further, but it was the bare minimum, and we can't even do incrementalism. So if Democrats won't even do incrementalism, if Republicans are just screeching about Mr. Potato Head getting canceled now, what's the point? I mean, <laughs> that's why we fucking hate politicians. That's why we hate Congress. So that's why, you know, at the beginning of this video, I said that that morning consult poll was so cathartic to see. Because it's nice to know that Americans feel the same way. I just wish that Americans would wake up and stop electing these people that are very clearly not looking out for them. When you see the red flags about dark money, when you see, you know, two candidates, Chantel Brown and Nina Turner, and one is facing an ethics probe and taking lots and lots of super PAC money, maybe view that as a sign that that person isn't going to help change the system since they're benefiting from it. When you see, you know, this uh, Democratic primary and you have an option of Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, and Joe Biden and the president before him, Barack Obama, they kind of uh, are responsible for widespread dissatisfaction that paved the way for Donald Trump. But then somebody's saying, hey, let, let's change what's happening, at least a little bit, so we can, we can stop further crises. And you go with Joe Biden because the media tells you to. I mean, you have to be introspective. You know, things are going to continue to deteriorate in this country if we all keep our heads up our asses. And that's not to say that as a leftist, I have all the answers, right? We're all imperfect. We're all trying to figure out uh, the best way to go forward, the best way to appeal to people who aren't necessarily politically engaged, the best way to motivate voters and keep them engaged. So this is an imperfect project, right? Politics is kind of, you know, we're, we're trying to adapt. That's part of it. So I'm not saying that I'm infallible and everything that I say will certainly, you know, um, be correct. But the problem is that doing the same fucking thing very clearly hasn't been working out. Being neoliberals, being corporatist, taking corporate PAC money, that very clearly hasn't worked. So, you know, at least you think maybe let's try what the left and progressives are pushing for at a minimum. But, you know, it's America. So the stupidest outcome is usually going to be the outcome that is the most likely. So, yeah, at least we all hate America, though, or we hate politicians in America, though, more specifically. that That's a good thing, right? We all agree on that, at least. So, yeah. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.